So I started off my makeup thinking I would go the mint chocolate chip route and then I stuck pink on the inside corner. I'm not saying I hate it, I think it still looks pretty, but I had this envision of mint chocolate chip ice cream and then I put pink in there and I was like, Katie, why did you put pink in a mint chocolate chip inspired ice cream look? Anyway, hello and welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to check out another one of my videos. Welcome to Kate Miss. I hope you guys are enjoying Kate Miss. In today's video, we are going to be doing a bit of nostalgia and looking back at my yearly favorites, but not just last year's favorites and not even like the year before that. I've done this before in the past, I think to 2017 and I think maybe 16 or maybe it was 18 and 16. I don't remember. I've done it twice before in years past where I take a yearly favorites and I revisit them to see if I still enjoy them. And then I had the bright idea and I was like, hey, what if I looked back at the the very first year-end favorites, best of beauty favorites that I ever shared talking about makeup on my blog. For those who don't know, I do have a blog. That's where I started before coming over to YouTube. It's been pretty dormant since I started YouTube, but it's over there. And one day I'd love to kind of kick it into gear again, but for now it's just, just hanging out there. But it's called From My Vanity and that's where I started way long ago. It's been through many rebrandings, many shifts, but it's now focused on makeup. And the very first year that I did a best of beauty for the year and shared all of my makeup favorites when it came to that year was 2014. So we're going back to 2014, the year I got married, so it's been six years or about, and we're gonna look at all the products that I selected as the best makeup that I tried that year, and I'm gonna share with you guys if I still like them, if they're still on the list, if I still enjoy them, have I ever repurchased them, that sort of thing, and we're in for a wild ride. I feel like I have changed so much since I was that girl in 2014 and the way I did my makeup and what I like to do for my makeup, and I didn't know what I was doing too, I should say that, I was so new to makeup. I was very new. So it should be very interesting to see what products I picked as my favorites and if I ever went on to repurchase them and if I still enjoy them. So yeah, let's just go ahead and jump right in and let me pull up my blog post from 2014. All right, so I am on my blog post. This was posted January 5th of 2015 and it is Best of Beauty Discoveries of 2014. If you ever wanna go and read this, the blog is post is still up, it's live on my blog, but we're just gonna be talking about the makeup and I scooted over so I can put the products here in case I don't have them. Spoiler alert, I don't have, I think, any of them. Anyway, moving on, let's go to the first one. I named the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream. So here you go. I can talk about this. I actually still have some of them in my collection. Are they any good anymore? Probably not. Anyway, I have, let's see, Zurich, Abu Dhabi, and San Paolo. These things used to be raved about on YouTube, but I don't really hear them talked about anymore, and I think it's a shame because I feel like they're really nice products. This was popular right before the liquid lipsticks became super popular, and then once those came out, these kind of fell by the wayside because while they are a liquid lipstick and they have a little bit of non-transferringness to them, they're not as bulletproof as a liquid lipstick, so when people got on the liquid lipstick train and didn't want it to come off ever. These didn't make the cut and I feel like that's when it started to kind of go off on the wayside and then people just, you know, new products come out, people forget and move on, but these are still really, really nice. If you're someone who likes a regular lipstick but you want it to be a little bit more not bulletproof, but you'd be able to stay a little bit more than a regular lipstick and you also want to be comfortable without like accentuating and drying out your lips. I feel like these tick all of the boxes when it comes to that. I really enjoy these for very comfortable, kind of like if I was wanting just regular lipstick but I wanted to stay better and to look matte, these are where I, this is the first thing that my mind goes to because these are just so comfortable. They glide over. I feel like they never really accentuate the lines in my lips and they're very pretty colors. They're very opaque. They're so comfortable to wear. And like I said, they're not going to be bulletproof or anything, but they're relatively, you know, I wouldn't say smudge proof, but they'll stay on your lips if you're careful with them. I wouldn't say you can kiss anyone or eat a big meal or a burger or anything like that, but if you're just drinking water from a straw or going about your day, they'll last a really long time. And they're just so nice and comfortable. I think that's the biggest kind of pro for this is that you put it on and you forget that you have a lipstick on. It's just so very comfortable. So yeah, this is one thing that, while I feel like this is not going to be the trend of the whole video, I still do love these and I still do recommend these. So 2014, my love for these is still going strong. I never give them enough love though because I feel like I rarely wear them but every time I think about them if I ever do pull them out to wear them I'm like oh my goodness these are so nice why don't I wear them more. Next up I named the It Cosmetics Celebration Foundation and also the Illumination. So I, there's a matte and illumination version or illuminating version. Um, I feel like I would never want the illumination version now but I do know in 2014 I moved out to California and I grew up in Florida and then I moved to California and my skin 
freaked. I, oh my goodness, I just, it was so terrible the first couple of months because I was so oily and I just had very oily acne prone skin. I still had acne prone skin when I got married and then we moved to California where the air is just so dry. There's like barely any humidity in the air and my skin went from like super oily to like dry as a Sahara desert and breaking out like crazy and everything that I was using beforehand was no longer working. So so anyway, when I was in California, my skin was very dry, so I can see why I like the Illumination uh, version of this powder, but talking about the matte now, I haven't used it in years, probably, maybe, I think I repurchased or I got another one because I used to get PR from Cosmetics. I think I did get another compact or two that I went through, but I haven't purchased it personally. However, thinking back, I do remember enjoying the powder, but this is all going off of memory. We're talking about if I still love it. I don't really think I ever used it again. But the big con I do also remember is that It Cosmetics has a terrible, terrible foundation shade selection. So I either went like too light and I kind of looked a little ghostly and I would just kind of bronze it up to make it match or I would go the next shade up and then I look like Oompa Loompa. So I could never find the exact shade match and that always bugs me. It's like, if you're a little bit off, it's one thing, but I mean, I would just look so pale with the light version and then I think the medium I just looked it was way too dark for me to make it work so that always annoyed me with that foundation is that I like the formula I liked how it looks but there was always a noticeable difference from my face to the rest of my body so this one's kind of like hmm, I think I would enjoy the formula still if I had it but I don't miss it and I don't ever want to go through the trouble of trying to find a foundation maybe they've expanded the line since then but at the time of this I think they had like five or six shades so that was definitely a big con for me. Okay, next I named the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Matte Bronzer and I still have it. I've tried to pan this baby a couple times and here's where we are at. We have pan, but we are still going strong. Now you guys know about how old this product is in my collection. I forget when I got it. I think I did buy it that year in 2014. I think it was one of those things I bought for my wedding to kind of splurge on. And so it's 2014 is when I bought this. So it's getting pretty old. I really should use it up and be done with it, but it's still here. It's still nice. I will say though, like now that I have so many bronzers and contours, this is definitely not my favorite. It's a little too orangey so if I try to just use this to bronze and contour like I like to do I like to have those shortcut products that I can use it to contour but also bring warmth so it's like a product that's like cool but has a little touch of warmth that's my favorite type of bronzer I don't like bronzers that are too too warm and this I definitely feel like is too too warm and so if I go in with it a little too hard and I don't have a kind of cool tone contour to balance it out I just feel like I can get a little oompa loompa looking and I mean also too I feel like I remember it being super pigmented maybe because it's so old it's starting to not be that pigmented because it doesn't look that bad in the swatch but when I have used this you know panning it and trying to complete it it's fine it's not my favorite when it comes to color that I like to have for my makeup but it definitely does the trick. Will I ever repurchase this? I don't think so. I might try if I think they came out with more shades so I might be tempted to try a more cool tone version of this and I think I would like it because I thought the formula was nice and the packaging is nice even though they don't have this packaging anymore but the new packaging looks really nice but there are so many bronzers and contours that I have in my collection now. Many of them either from indie or drugstore, I don't really foresee myself purchasing it from Too Faced just because I feel like when I bought this, this is what everyone raved about and they said like, if you like bronzing and contour and you know, if that's what you like to do, which I really do enjoy, this is like the holy grail of products. I don't find that to be the case anymore. There are so many better, cheaper, and indie brands that you can buy from that I feel like give you a very nice bronzer contour. So for me, I don't think I'll ever repurchase this, but you know, thinking back to when I named this as a favorite, I can see why I did. It is a good product, but I've just moved on and found more. However, still hanging on to this because I still haven't finished it. Okay, next I named the ELF Studio Small Stipple Brush. I don't think I have this anymore. Yeah, I don't think it because um, after this, I received this brush from Steel. It's a Duo Fiber Mini Blender S302, and it's like the same thing as the ELF Studio Small Stipple Brush that I had. So I got rid of the ELF one just because I had this and it was a bit nicer, a little bit more expensive, so I decluttered the other one. However, it looks identical. So I still love the idea of this brush, and if I didn't have this, I would still have had the e.l.f. stipple brush because I just feel like it's so nice. If you are into cream products, especially I would use this mostly for blush, stipple brushes are so nice when it comes to cream products that you're wanting to put on the cheeks. I learned this tip from Emily Noel and it stuck with me forever. And yeah, it would always blend so much better than my fingers. And then I also like to not have to get my fingers dirty because that was also annoying if I was ever using a cream product. I didn't like to tap it on because then my fingers would get all dirty or if I had, you know, shimmery eyeshadows on my fingers and then I tap the blush on 
then I would have sparkly blush and I didn't want that. So yeah, speaking about a small stipple brush, I definitely still like it, still definitely recommend it. And this was the year 2014 was the year I discovered it because Emily mentioned it in a video. So yeah, I, I totally remember and understand why I named that as a favorite. It's all due to Emily and I still love and enjoy having a small stipple brush in my collection today. Next up is the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. I actually do have this. Thankfully, it's not the same one as the one I mentioned in 2014. I actually have kind of fallen out of love with this. This used to be like all I would use. I think this is like the third tube I've gone through, but this tube, this third one, I think once I finish it, I don't think I'll be buying it again. Maybe I have to use it more, but I just, I've come, it, concealers have come so long and I've tried so many concealers, many of them from the drugstore. Both of Milani's concealers, I absolutely love. One is a little bit more sheer coverage, kind of like this one, and the other one's full coverage, but both of them last so well. They don't really crease and get crinkly or accentuate the lines underneath my eyes, and I love that about it. Whereas this, the last couple of months that I pulled it to use in my everyday makeup drawer, I feel like I've noticed it, you know, maybe not exactly cracking and accentuating the lines, but definitely not looking great. And then also coverage wise, there's just other concealers that I've tried since then that I feel like gives me more coverage, but still stays just as light feeling on my under eyes. So yeah, while I don't think this is a fail, I don't think this is a terrible product. I definitely think at the time this was a really great buy to get from the drugstore and get the type of coverage that I got. But as I've, you know, gone through the years and tried more out, I've discovered, and maybe just formulas have changed, but I've discovered so many at the drugstore that are really good that just do a little bit more for me. So for this, I feel like I've kind of fallen out of love. It's just not that impressive and it doesn't give me that much coverage. So I'd rather go with other concealers that give me nice coverage and then stay a lot better or not a lot better, but stay better than this does on my under eyes. So this is a product that it's fallen out of love. I could, I definitely couldn't call this a best of beauty, you know, yearly favorites looking back over my concealers and thinking about everything that I've tried. It's definitely not the best, but very nostalgic product that I used to absolutely love. I went through so many tubes, but I, I think my journey with it is ending. Next up, I have the Bite Beauty Cream Lipstick and High Pigment Pencils. Now, I don't have any of these, but these are the little lip pencils. These were absolutely fantastic. I still do really enjoy Bite Beauty's formula. They have a very creamy formula, so it's one of those lipsticks where I have to be in the mood to wear it because if you bump into anything, if you aren't checking your teeth, like I should be doing right now because I have this glass that's probably going to get all over my teeth, but if you're not checking on them, I do remember them being so very smooth and so emollient and just smooth feeling on the lips. I don't know how to, like creamy on the lips that it would it would make a mess. Like it could get everywhere. So I used to wear them so much when we first got married, hence why it was in my yearly favorites. But once I had Olivia and from then on having more kids, I just noticed that I wasn't reaching for them as much. But with that said, they're still really good. I think I just used those up and and then you know moved on also to buy beauty is a bit more expensive and for me lipsticks aren't the place that I like to splurge on so to spend that much money on a lipstick I just always kind of talk myself out of but you know talking about this set I got it at Christmas time that came in the little sets that is the way to go I'm kind of tempted to get one of their sets again just have it in my collection because I really do like their products and it's nice to know that everything is you know food grade ingredients so it's, it's okay if you eat them because they are on your lips so you eat a lot of lipsticks throughout the years and if my kids ever got a hold of it Levi wouldn't, you know, die. He might get a tummy ache, but he wouldn't die eating the lipsticks if he did get a hold of it. So it always made me feel really good when I had them. But yeah, I don't think I have any of the pencils. They just have lipsticks. But Bite Beauty lip products are really nice. I do still enjoy them. However, I do feel like a lot more affordable brands have come out with really nice lip product uh, formulas since then. So I would not never call them like a yearly favorites or best of beauty anymore, but they're a good product. Okay, I had ColourPop's Vibrant Eyeshadows. Danny from Coffee Break with Danny. She was the first influencer I heard talking about ColourPop back when all they had were the Super Shocks. So she is the one that introduced me to ColourPop. And yeah, they their Super Shocks were a yearly favorites. I definitely would not call them a yearly favorites now. Just because that formula, I just, maybe it's over the years or whatever, but I feel like I would have creasing with them. And then also I don't like using my fingers. So that always bugs me. So that's definitely a reason why it's fallen off the radar. And I just haven't bought any of their super shocks in so, so long. I don't have any of my collection and I can't remember the last time I got rid of like my very last super shock. It was years ago. So this is one that I named a favorite and looking back now, Katie has changed a lot. She doesn't like using her fingers. She doesn't like the really soft formula. So this is definitely something that Katie of 2020 has changed a lot from Katie of 2014 and I wouldn't call this a favorite anymore. Okay, the next thing I named a favorite was the Ick Brushes for Ulta 105 Airbrush Blending Crease Brush and I actually still enjoy this brush. I have two. This is the second one that I purchased but I still have that original one that I featured. So 2014 is when I picked it up and then a year or two after that I picked up another brush and this is a fantastic blending brush. Now do you need to spend the money that this cost to get a really nice brush? It is only $14 though. 
I buy a lot of expensive brush, so $14, I'm like, oh, that's not so bad, but $14, I would say, you know, you can get at Ulta, wait for a sale, wait for a discount, something like that, and I think these brushes are really nice. They're great for that initial transition shade as I get all my hair. They're great for just sweeping those mattes into the crease. It works so nice. It is so very soft. In 2014, and like I said, I bought this maybe a year after that, 2014, I've owned that brush, and it has been fantastic. Never an issue, and just thinking about how old that is, six years, how many times I've washed that, the bristles are still so very soft. They aren't deformed. I've never noticed any falling out. These brushes, it brushes for Ulta. I feel like no one ever talks about them, but when you're talking about like it brushes for Ulta and it cosmetics brushes, which it cosmetics brushes are very expensive, I feel like they're very much comparable the same. So I would say just go for these and save some money. But yeah, this is a brush. I mean, you can get cheaper brushes. I've certainly experienced more brushes since then that I really do enjoy. And I tend to like smaller, more detailed brushes, so I don't use these as often. But if I need a blending brush like this size, this is one of the ones that I go for and I'm always very happy with what I get. So yeah, would I name it an absolute like your favorite? Probably not because like I said, I like more detailed brushes, but when it comes to a nice good solid brush that lasts a good long time, six years, I definitely still stand behind this and say it's a fantastic brush. Next, I called it Clinique Super Primer Face Primer as a yearly favorite. I have no memory of this whatsoever. When I was looking over the post, I was like, oh wait, I tried that? So... Yeah, this is a product that I've I finished that too. Never repurchased it. Primers are one of those things I tend to just kind of try new things. I, I'm trying to think if I've ever repurchased a specific primer. And I don't think so. I think when I finish a primer, I just move on to the next thing. So that's not too surprising. But yeah, this is a product looking back. It didn't leave that big an impression on me. So while I called it a year favorite, it never... It, for me to call it a year favorite, I feel like I should have bought it at least one more time. But I didn't. So... Yeah, that, that sells a lot for me now. Okay, talking about repurchasing though, this is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. This is a product I really did love, but I never repurchased because it's, it was so expensive at the time. It's $30, which I still feel like is pretty pricey, but there's just so many good ones at the drugstore. I have a hard time spending that much money unless it's a new product that I want to try out and review, and then I can kind of justify the price because I can make it into a video. But to repurchase a product like NARS, you know, Radiant Creamy Concealer, just to have, I just couldn't justify the money. So this is something that, while I thought it was really nice, it was a very nice product, a very nice formula. It did great things. You know, it did do anything bad for my under eyes but when we're talking about how it performed on my eyes and how long it wore and you know how nice my under eyes looked there's many from the drugstore concealers that I think do just as well so when that was finally used up I was kind of like do I buy from the drugstore or do I repurchase this $30 concealer and I just I ended up buying from the drugstore and I'm still I'm really happy because drugstore concealers there are some bomb ones out there I named the Lorac Mega Pro Palette as my year favorites, and I can totally see this. In 2014, I was very much a neutral girl. Let me pull it out from my shelf. I was very much a neutral girl, so I can totally see why I named this as a favorite. I think this was the year it came out, or it came out the year before that, but this was one of the most expensive products, or expensive, yeah, products, palettes that I ever bought at almost $60. It was $59, so this was definitely a splurge for me, and I remember just having so much fun with this. Looking back at it, I just see so much nostalgia because these pans, this Lorac palette brings back so many memories. I used to be such a crazy big fan of Lorac Cosmetics, but since moving on to color, I've tried to be a fan of Lorac. Like, I bought their one one colorful palette that they've ever launched, and it was just okay. And then they went on to, like, launch 16 million more neutral palettes, but... Since I enjoy color, I can't be a fan of them because they don't really do color anymore. So for me with this palette, this is definitely something that I would not call it a favor. I wouldn't even call it like an enjoy. I mean, if I was going for a neutral palette, I guess so. Their formula, their matte formula is really, really good. Their shimmers are definitely a lot more soft. Nothing too, you know, noteworthy, especially now with my preferences. They're just, they're very soft. Not satin. They're, just, they're a shimmer, but they're just nothing metallic, nothing sparkly. They're just... They're just shimmers, shiny shimmers. So, yeah, with this, I would never call it a favorite now. And it's just a nice product. If you want a neutral palette, sure. But for me, I could get maybe one look out of this. But definitely for how many shades there are and how expensive this is, yeah, I wouldn't call it a favorite. Okay, last up is the Maybelline Dream Wonder Powder. This product I used up and I did go on to repurchase it. And then I just never have since then. However, I kind of really want to repurchase this because I remember enjoying this powder so very much. And it's from the drugstore. So you guys know I like getting things from the drugstore if I can and if I do really enjoy the product. And this, I do remember just the product being so silky smooth and the coverage being really nice. So this is a product I don't really 
have a reason for why I never repurchased it, except that I just like to try new things, so I think I just went on and purchased something else. So yeah, with this one, I would have to say it's not a favorite anymore. I wouldn't call it a yearly favorite because I never went on to repurchase. However, I have really great memories of it. And seeing this now, I'm kind of tempted to buy it and see if I still love it as much as I remember. Because I remember being such a huge fan of that. And I, like I said, I at least went on to buy one more powder uh, compact because I do remember using it again. But, or using it for longer in 2016, or 15 and 16. But yeah, that's just something I kind of have forgotten about in trying the newer products. The, these older products that are really solid, I just forget about because I, I, I don't need a ton of makeup. I try to be somewhat... I, I know I'm not because I have a ton of makeup, but I try to be somewhat conscious of how much I have and try not to overbuy. So for me, I can never justify buying an older product when I was trying newer ones. So yeah, but thinking about it, maybe I'll pick it up and try it again because I'm kind of curious to see if I would still like it. But at this moment, it's not still a favorite because I don't have it in my collection. All right, so there you have it. Those are all the products that I named Best of Beauty for 2014. Boy, have times changed. It was so funny. The first time I was scrolling through that post, I was like, yep, don't have that anymore. Yep, don't use that anymore. Yep, I found better than that. But times change. You try more things. You, you know, your preferences change. Like, oh my goodness, eyeshadow preferences have definitely changed. So it's always fun to like look back and see how much you've changed and how much I've grown over the years and how much more I've discovered over the years when it comes to makeup. But yeah, it was a lot of fun to look back and I hope you guys enjoyed looking back and seeing what products I named as my yearly favorites and how much I've changed and just hearing a little bit of nostalgia for from me thinking back over those years six years ago oh my goodness it, it's crazy to think that that's how long it's been but yeah it has been a crazy six years since then like I said I got married in 2014 so just thinking about everything that's happened since then and how much I've changed and how you know I've gone from being on a blog to now being on YouTube it's it's really cool to look back so I hope you guys enjoyed it and I want to I like doing these little flashbacks at the end of the year with that said I hope you guys enjoyed it and if you did hit the thumbs up button on your way out as it helps me in the whole YouTube algorithm and if you want to continue getting daily ish content from me I'm over on Instagram I usually upload there about every day but with Kate Miss I might be missing some days but yeah you can check me out over there for a different type of content than what you find over here I share a lot of fun little videos I share up close makeup shots and whatnot and with that said I will see you very soon in my next video tomorrow bye guys